a real wild one. It's Bernadette. I am the creator and channel of the award-winning Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. It is such an honor to be helping you today as you look for all things spiritual about panda bears. So let's jump in right in and start with the overall symbolism and meaning of panda bear, which is, you know, when you take a look really at any animal, um, I always tell people when you're trying to interpret the symbolic meaning, um, you want to know the spiritual meaning of it, start with the color first. Well, the type of animal, and then if there are multiples of that animal, like there are a lot of different kinds of owls, lots of different kinds of bears, what colors are involved, what area are they from of the world. So we know that panda bears are from uh, the Eastern culture, from, you know, Asia. And then we take a look at their coloration, which is black and white. And that's always a great foundation to start with. So um, when I'm helping people understand what it means when they've seen, you know, any kind of animal, you go like, oh my God, I keep having panda bears show up in my awareness, or I just really seem fascinated by them all of a sudden. I like to start out with a quote about that animal. I couldn't find any panda bear quotes, but because panda bears uh, do represent the yin and the yang or the yin and the yang, as some people say, balance, peace. Um, Albert Einstein has a great quote that uh, reads, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. And, and I find that's really true, definitely with bears, you know, kind of as an animal, just a grouping. Uh, because it can be very easy to assume that it's very simple. They like to hibernate. That means going within. They have a sweet tooth. That's about finding the sweetness in life and allowing yourself to enjoy it. Certainly, you know, the protective thing with the mother bear protecting her cubs, their ferocity, their this, their cuddly. And all of those things are true, but it goes so much deeper than that, especially with panda bears. Now, I'm a little biased, I have to say. Um, because I've been obsessed with panda bears ever since I was old enough to see my first stuffed animal or a picture I don't even remember, but I've just been obsessed with pandas my whole life. So let's talk about the most obvious thing first in panda bear symbolism and meaning. And when we go to that black and white color and we go to balance and we go to peace and we go to the yin and the yang, it's important to understand that when you take a look at that yin-yang symbol, it's perfectly balanced, but each part of, e, you know, there's a little dot of each color in the other side. So there's a dot of black and the white, there's a dot of white and the black. And just traditionally, the yin of the, of the symbol is the right side descending, its color is black, its direction is north, it's the moon, um, it's the feminine energy, and it's kind of the shady side, with not shady like, that person's so shady. It's not like that. It's more about the, the, the coloration, the darkness. And that makes really good sense because the moon is a very feminine energy. It's all about reception. And then, of course, that makes the yang or the yang or yang, the male side. Its left side is ascending. Its color is white. Its direction, its cardinal direction is south. Um, its ruling planet is the sun, and it's the sunny side. And that gives you more of that aggressive energy. Um, not in a negative way, but just that kind of something we associate a little bit more with the male energies. Go, 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 get them, get them, get them. So when, when you are looking at panda, the symbolism and meaning of panda bear, it's important to start considering as you're interpreting the symbolic meaning, it's important to consider what kind of masculine feminine balance do you need in your life or are you seeking and maybe not getting at this time? So that's something that you can take a look at. If for some reason you're feeling very out of balance uh, in that way, then you can call on panda bear energy and medicine to help you get more back in balance that way and help you achieve really what it is that, you, you know, that you're trying to achieve. So the other thing to take a look at is with, with, when things are in balance, then they're they're in peace and really y'all i know i'm fidgeting with my thing here it's making me crazy um when you start to talk about finding balance so that you can find peace that's not as easy usually <laughs> as just one video so take into consideration all things that are um in 
kind of in juxtaposition to one another. And what that means is the yin and the yang, the black and the white, even if it was like blue and white or pink and gray or just anything two-tone, it's about unity. It's about completeness. It's about finding the other half. It's about having the halves be balanced. You know, masculine, feminine, light and dark, peanut butter and jelly. And without that balance, without that, without balance, there can't be peace. Without peace, there can't be balance, right? So remember also that we're looking at circles when we look at the yin and the yang. And I've kind of always equated that to the patches around the black patches around a panda bear's eyes. Now, they're not perfect circles. I understand that. They're oblong, and I get that. But there's there are just so many calls on a panda bear that really speak to, you know, especially being from the Eastern culture. They're all about balance. They're all about peace. It might sound like I'm repeating myself, but I'm really not. Because when panda shows up in your life, when panda bear shows up, and you're out there searching, well, you know, what's the spiritual meaning of this? Why, why am I seeing panda so much? Why am I suddenly really kind of obsessed or very interested? It can be tough to know where those areas of balance or peace are not, but they should be. Or you might actually be in the middle of trying to find that and be frustrated or a little discouraged. And panda bear has shown up for you as a spirit animal to let you know it's okay. It's going to happen. Just keep working. Keep moving. The balance is going to come. The peace is going to come. Um, also, when we take a look at uh, panda bear symbolism and meaning, then we can go back to the Asian culture, which panda bears are such a huge omen of good fortune. Um, they're just such a great a uh, bear teaches you kind of see to see the opportunities on the horizon and find the harmony inside of yourself to be able to move forward to take those opportunities. So if you're out of balance, you might run so aggressively towards the opportunity, wham, like a football player, you just mow it right over, right? And then if you're too, you know, maybe a little reticent or you're not confident enough, well, that opportunity may pass you by when you most needed it. And, and that might be a regret that you carry for a long time. So panda bears always symbolize. Um, panda bear meaning is definitely also wrapped up in that good fortune thing. Good fortune can mean a lot of things, right? Mind, body, spirit. But when you, it doesn't matter what kind of good fortune that you're looking for you can take the panda bear as a sign that it's it's either right you're right there or it's just about to come the other thing is when you go inside again to find that place where you're going to be able to create the balance or the peace with inside of yourself to go out and get that fortune or be accepting of that good fortune it, it, that's going to work with your heart chakra and again, when we take a look at a heart, it's kind of two halves of a whole, right? The way that we see it and kind of the way that it's shaped and we interpret it, it's got two distinct halves, um, very much like lungs, but you know, uh, it's lungs are not a chakra, hearts are a chakra. So you're gonna wanna work on the love. I, I you know, without sounding very trite, self-love, you're gonna wanna work on that. That might be what's inhibiting you or holding you back. Remember, I, I always ask people to remember the quote, which is again the, Einstein, uh, the Albert Einstein quote, um, which is balance or peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. And goodness knows if we, uh, if we could understand our own hearts better than we understand anything else, my God, I can't even imagine what this world would be like, right? Okay, so try that first. And then if you feel like panda bear is still kind of pinging your awareness, some other things that we can look at for panda bear symbolism and meaning is really just like any animal. Be very aware of your surroundings. Be very aware of the vibrations coming out. And clear out any kind of negative vibrations that might be polluting your environment or what you would call your sacred terrain. And, you know, bears, when they hibernate, 
because even though panda bear has its own spirituality and it has its own symbolic meanings, it's a bear. And so all of the general bear things, the, the bear meanings do apply to panda bear. And part of that is that hibernation time, which is, you know, people talk a lot of stuff about meditating. They talk a lot about, you know, they need to make time for themselves and, and, then, and then we don't do it. We don't do it. And, you know, you'll see behind me, I'm filming this during um, a Halloween time, which happens to be 2020. And, um, you know, we're, we're still in a pandemic. We're still on, you know, kind of self-imposed lockdown. And it's been really interesting to me to see how many people have really taken this time to be very bear-like. Now, part of that is, you know, we were asked not to go out as much as we could not go out. And at some point, you know, you can only watch so many movies, read so many books, do so many things on the computer. And for people walking their spiritual path or going through spiritual awakening, they're going to want to spend time in their own cave considering everything. Well, remember, when you're asleep, you're in the dark. And oh, that's my dog, Hops. And it can be a little bit of a scary time if you let it. But Bear will give you courage. Bear will give you the stamina and the uh, just the backbone to face whatever comes in those dreams, whatever might come during your dreams time. Bears are just the most delightful creatures. And so you might be being called to come out of those shadows. You might be being called to say, okay, enough, enough with the spiritual this and the doing the awakening and all doing all the deep inner work. Oh my God, I just need a beer and to laugh, right? Or, you know, I need a kombucha and to be able to laugh. Excellent. Go out and get yourself some natural sugar of some kind and chomp down on that stuff and laugh with friends and lighten it up. Roll around in the leaves and the dirt outside, you know, discover your feet for the first time. Oh, I love it when bears do that. They roll around on their back and they grab their paws like, oh my God, I got a paw. They're the cutest things ever. And just chill out, just lighten up because bear medicine, yo, I could do a five hour video just on bears. Every culture across the world has got a fascination with bears. I mean, a deep, deep fascination with them. And their medicine it, it's always a sign that you are preparing to go to your higher self, to connect more deeply with your higher self and enter a position of leadership. Now, again, that's going to all dovetail back to the balance, to the peace. I mean, if you're going to be a leader, what's the one thing you've got to do? You've got to motivate. You've got to keep balance. You've got to keep, you know, help people keep moving forward and upward in their own lives. And that's a really big task to take on. Only the bravest, most courageous, or most egotistical, um, you know, will do that. But if you are seeing bears, but panda bear in particular, that is always also going to come. Its symbolism and meaning is definitely going to come, especially in that authoritative role, that leadership role, where you're going to be taking care of family. You're going to become the mother cub or the, you know, the mama bear, even if you're a fella or whatever you identify with, it, it's still the mama bear role. Now that may mean your own physical children, adopted children. Maybe you've been promoted to manager. Maybe you run a spiritual center. Not that you would look down on people or think that you're more all that than they are, but you kind of think of them as your children, meaning to protect your flock and get your flock or your, you know, um, your pride or your, you know, your den or your whatever, what they need and what they're wanting. And, and that can take, uh, that can take a lot because again, it's going to go back to peace can't be achieved unless you understand. So when you're being called with panda bear medicine and energy, you are definitely being called to a much higher realm of spiritual growth, spiritual progression, because moving into that leadership, it's a call, a big, big sign, a big, big omen for you 
that leadership is knocking on your door, knocking on your door, knock, 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 knock. Hello, who's there? Leadership, leadership who? Come out and get all the bear medicine. Like, it's like that, okay? The other thing bear tells us is to stay true. They don't, you know, they're not like coyotes. They're not like foxes. They're not like ravens. They're really not tricksters. Bears just are who they are. And they don't really care what you think. They just, you know, if you want to get along with them, awesome. If you don't carry it farther down in the woods, they, they don't really care. And so as a leader, it's definitely important for you to take into consideration what your children want, what the community wants. But at the end of the day, that's your decision to make. And again, that coming from that place of understanding where you can really understand as many points of view and as many needs as you know as you can absorb and then making your decisions from it now if you kind of take a look at the hibernation cycle of a bear and you know you kind of they go in they're under they're in the dreams time then they come out I always, when people are like, Bernadette, what do bears mean? What do bears mean? I, I know that their dreams, their dreams time has been crazy. It may have involved a bear. It may not have involved a bear. I don't know. But it's definitely a call for you to pay very, very close attention to your dreams. Like journal them. And I'm the biggest person that's always like, everybody should journal. You should journal. I don't journal. I don't honestly, but I think that's because I do so much writing in my books and my cards and on my website and whatever. Um, it's kind of like a living, breathing journal for me, but now is a really excellent time to pay attention to your dreams because of that correlation, of that symbolic meaning of bear and the hibernation. Now, let's talk about um, panda bear as a spirit totem and power animal. Well, if you don't know the difference between a spirit totem and power animal, Take a look in the um, comments section below and there'll be a link to my video about what the difference is. But briefly, a spirit animal is the animal that comes to you when you need it most. And you may have consciously asked the animal allies to send you an animal spirit guide for whatever you're going through. Or it may be a subconscious thing. I've got a million stories after being a reader for a thousand jillion years. I've got a million stories about people that, you know, they'd say to me, Bernadette, I keep having this animal show up or I keep seeing this picture of this animal and I'm like, right, that's your spirit animal trying to, trying to get to you to show you here's how it's here to support, strengthen, and inspire you. When a panda bear comes to you, it really does have every, as a spirit animal, so the panda bear spirit animal, it has everything to do with everything that we've talked about, but there's one more thing. When when things are out of balance, we can err to the side of being so kind of full of ourselves or so cocky um, that we maybe get a little callous. We may not have quite the compassion that we might normally have. And then if we're experiencing a lack, we might be uh, kind of, you know, wallowing in self-pity neither of those things neither of those things are very helpful so if panda bear is just it just keeps pinging your awareness pinging your awareness it's really time to get your perspective about your blessings especially because panda bears in the asian cultures represent good fortune it's time to get your perspective about good fortune or bad fortune under control you cannot have light without darkness, so they say. I look forward to finding a space somewhere in the universe that's always in the light. Yes, I do. Um, but it, 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 again, it said you can't have darkness without the light, but you don't have to be like a pendulum. You don't have to sway so much from one side to the other that you're either on top of the world, and then when you come crashing down, you crash so hard that you're just like, oh my God, I can't move. I can't get out of bed. It doesn't have to be that way. And life is no less exciting when you do have balance and you do have peace. You know, I'm a triple Scorpio. And when I was a kid and I used to hear people talk about peace and balance, I'd look at those people and think, my God, they're the most boring people on the planet. I'd rather go through all the trauma, drama, 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 llama that I go through because I just can't, I, I, I used to, 
look at them and think they're mummified. They're just automatons. They're just going through the world like this. Now that I'm older and I have experienced true peace and true balance, you can't describe the satisfaction, this deep, deep satisfaction in knowing that you know that you know that you know everything is as it should be. Everything is okay. Everything is perfect in that moment. I, I, I just don't have any words to describe that. And that's what Panda Bear is your spirit animal is trying to get you to see. Is if something is out of balance, maybe your safe space, you know, is out of balance. Maybe you don't feel safe. Maybe somebody is stretching your boundaries. Maybe you're stretching your own boundaries. But rein it in, you guys. Rein it in and get with the peacekeeping mission, even if it's just peacekeeping for yourself. Now, as a totem animal, um, you know, you're born under a zodiac sign, and that is your first totem animal. That's your birth totem. Whether it's in the Western zodiac, the Celtic zodiac, the Native American zodiac, the Chinese zodiac, that's your first animal. But you... My totem animal has always been bears. I, my name, even before I knew anything about all the woo-woo metaphysical stuff, I was interested in what my name meant. You know, most of us are. And I, again, I've been obsessed with bears my whole life. And I think it was like my mid-20s when I went, you know, hunting around to find out what my name meant. I almost fell out of my chair. Bernadette is the feminine counterpart to the French name, the French masculine name, Bernard. And translated from French to English, Bernard means brave, strong bear. My friends from years and years back, if I'm like on the war path or I'm just like, y'all, I'm tired. I need to go sleep for a couple of days. Or I'm shoveling down the sugar because, my God, I've had a sweet tooth my whole life. Like, it's legendary, my sweet tooth. They would call me Bernadette. So that's been my totem animal and the only other animal that's really come to me as a totem is a snow leopard. And that she's been appearing to me for the last maybe four or five years, but along with the panda bear. So what that basically means is whatever animal or animals you most identify with, like you really truly feel that there's a big part of you that is that animal and that animal is you, that's your totem animal. So certainly if you um, have a panda bear as your spirit animal, you're a natural peacemaker, you're very supportive. You don't have to be around a lot of people. You just love to be around like-minded people. You're really good at problem solving because you rely on that inner wisdom, that inner knowing that you have. And you're, you probably have a lot of really prophetic dreams that come true that amaze you and amaze, you know, the people aside, you know, beside you that, that know you. So also, you know, listen, bears are climbers. And if bear is your totem animal, you're really good at climbing up hills, climbing, you know, up a, up a tree to wait out a storm or you know, getting to the top of a mountain in some way, but you're good at the climb. You're slow, you're steady, you're strong, um, you've got stamina. Good for you. I want to know you. Yes, I do. All right. Now, if there's your, uh, if panda bear is your power animal, then again, it, it's gonna, it's gonna have to do with all of the things that we've talked about so far, but it's also, um, you know, power animals are, are, are a challenge to describe to people because really everything is inside of us and we're inside of everything, which goes back to the yin and the yang symbol. This half is white, this half is black, but in the white, you know, there's a black dot. And in the black part, there's a white dot. Everything is interconnected. So when people ask me how to invoke a power animal, what I tell them is, well, you can invoke it. But really what you're looking to do is unite that part of your own spirit that is what you want in that animal. It, if, you, if you are feeling out of balance, if you're having a tough time getting back in balance, if you're really not feeling peaceful, or if people around you are bringing the ruckus and you've just had enough and you want to put an end to it, Panda Bear is a great, great, power animal to be able to do that with. 
and how you unite really, you know, because people ask me that all the time, well, how, really, how do I unite with the part of me that's panda bear? Okay, well, that's going to that's gonna mean a little bit of that hibernation stuff again. That's going to mean a little bit of the understanding again. It can be really easy to lash out if somebody has said or done something that hurts you or angers you or injures you. It can be really easy to take that bear paw and just whoosh, metaphorically, obviously. Um, or you could try to take a few minutes and understand why they might have done that, thought that, said that, and that includes asking them. There is a power in asking questions. When you assume and you act on assumptions, you've basically given up your power because you have no idea if you're acting on the truth or not. And remember, going back to the very beginning of this video, when we were talking about panda bear symbolism and meaning, bears are truth tellers. They're truth livers. They don't, there's no avarice. There's no um, tricksterness with them. They are who they are. And just being out with it, asking people, you know, what did you mean by this? Why did you do this? Then you can use that understanding to gain peace. And what you might find is that in a lot of situations, you don't even want to address it. You just move on and understand. Now you have a better understanding of that person. Now you have a better understanding of that situation. And you'll make smarter, stronger choices as you move ahead because you'll have a deeper, a deeper understanding of where their imbalances are. And that right there in a nutshell is one of the reasons I love bears so much, in particular panda bears, but I just love bears so much because they are as fuzzy, cuddly. I belong to this Facebook group, y'all. It's hilarious. You should join it. Um, I know I'll die trying to pet this. And it's about people that have all these encounters and they're very um, pro, you know, don't do stupid things with wild animals and animals should be in the wild and so on and so forth. I just love everything <laughs> about this group. And as I watch people talk about it, I got to be honest, I know if I was out somewhere in Asia and I'm, um, well, actually, I think I read the other day, there are no more wild pandas. I think I read that, or there are very few of them. Honestly, if I saw a panda, I, I'd probably have to try to pet that panda, no joke. As, as much as I know about animals, I'm your spirit totem power animal lady. I, 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 I would have to, but as fuzzy and cuddly and as I want to pet this, you know, as they are, they are bears and they will protect their turf. They will protect their babies and their bears, y'all. So when people are talking about uniting with that part of them that is that animal, there, remember, there is no light without darkness and vice versa. So you have to decide, do you want to unite your spirit with that ferocity? Now, you don't have to wear the ferocity on the outside. Again, you don't have to do that. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know about y'all, but my mom only had to give me one look and I was like, ah, I just knew my world had ended and she never had to say a word, right? That's ferocity. But not everybody is comfortable living in that kind of strength or, or summoning up that kind of strength and only you can decide. So... Uh, just a couple other quick things. When, when we take a look at panda bears in dreams, um, if they're nibbling on the bamboo or on leaves, you're definitely needing some nourishment of some kind. Take a look at the, um, how many animals have shown up. And that's the same, you know, in your awareness when you're considering, um, you know, panda bear symbolism and meaning, when you're thinking about panda bear as a spirit totem and power animal, is how many bears are you seeing? Like, are they coming to you at one? And the number one in numerology means the creator. It's the beginning of things. Are you seeing two of them, three of them, 10 of them, 15 of them? Take a look at the numerology around that, but especially, especially, especially in the dreams. Again, if you come back to seeing um, also, uh, you know, not just in your dreams, but in your waking time, if the animals keep coming to you and you keep seeing them eating, what are they eating? If it's the bamboo and it's green, green goes to the heart chakra. What imbalances are in your heart? What kind of nourishment do you need mind, body, and spirit? 
have you fed your soul lately? Are you out of balance in that way? Or you just work, 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 worry, 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 and haven't been taking self time or time for family. Um, a panda bear cuddling with another panda bear, that's about caring. That's about having a great balance and good peace with your family, the people that you love, um, your intimate relationships. And again, um, there's such a call for you to just really consider everything that happened in that dream. When you wake up, how does that make you feel? And write all of those things down. So overall, just to go over it again, the panda bear symbolic key is, you know, opposites, balance, equilibrium, thankfulness. Remember, panda bears are all about good fortune. So how are you counting your blessings or are you discounting your bl blessings? Privacy, flexibility, the earth element, um, strength, determination, resolve. And, and all bears do definitely represent privacy. And that's, that's that whole thing about going within. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, again, it's always my honor to, to just give you any, any piece of anything that I can give you that will help you become closer to your animal allies. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Pick up your copy of the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. It's a 100-card deck that, will, that has 100 different animal allies for you to work with, especially if you are studying shamanism, you're working on psychic development, tarot reading, um, just working with the animal allies, the animal spirit guides. It is the most comprehensive deck and book on the planet. No joke. The book is 372 pages all color. It's, it, it's a standalone book all in of itself. So um, many, many blessings to you. And I will share with you that the most important thing in your life is always to stay wild.